Hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, this is Jake Selvage, um, and we're playing Hotline Miami tonight for our midnight stream. Um, I just recently picked this game up on Steam for like under three bucks. I think it was like two fifty. Um, normally it's ten bucks. Uh, I figured for that price I'd give it a shot. I know I've heard a lot of good things about it, so um, I figured you know why not. But, um, so, I played through it, I've actually, uh, played it the past few days, I ended up blazing through it, I ended up getting all the achievements. Actually, I really don't, um, play a lot of games to get the achievements, really. Um, I guess <laughs> another game that I've been playing since I've been on Steam, which, actually, I haven't been on Steam for very long, but, um, I got Duke Nukem 3D, it's a... It's an old standard of mine. I was really glad to uh, get that on there, but uh, there are like a million achievements. I don't, I don't feel like getting any of those. But this game is actually compact enough that I feel like if you just look up an achievement guide, you really have to do it. Then it's, it's not that bad. But um, so yeah, so I figured I'd play the first few levels, see what you guys think. Um, I definitely enjoyed this game, and you'll <laughs> you'll see that here. But um, so we'll start from the beginning. Uh, if you have anything to say in the chat, uh, feel free to drop a line in there. I will check in between levels. Uh, I'm running this off the laptop, so it might be a little grainy, um, but uh, and and a little choppy. But we'll 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 see how it goes. So um, you know, let's uh, start up the game here. We're here to tell you how to kill people. This game is controlled with the left and right stack. Press right trigger to punch, aim for the face. Once you knock someone out, you have to finish him. To do this, you press the A button, you got it. Oh god, tutorial. Right trigger to punch, A button to finish. Do you understand me? Don't mess this up. Done and done. Oh. Okay, this is all tutorial, so. Boom. Baseball bat. So it's very reminiscent of um, GTA 5, I hear, or G GTA, the original GTA, GTA 5. I haven't even played GTA 5. Um, but it's it's a lot it's a lot more complicated than that. Uh, I feel like it it in a way it's almost kind of like the combat system from uh, the Arkham series, the Batman games. Uh, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City. Um, it's very, I mean, your your combos um, aren't really, like, stringed like that. I mean, obviously you're trying to get combos, but, um, yeah. So, the also, the main story here is pretty awesome. Uh, but I know you. Look at my face. We've met before, haven't we? I don't know you. Why are you here? You're no guest of mine. Do you really want me to reveal who you are? Knowing oneself means acknowledging one's actions. As of lately, you've done some terrible things. You don't remember me? I'll give you a clue. Does April the 3rd mean anything to you? I believe that was the day of our first encounter. You look like you might be remembering something. It's not as creepy when I uh, act it out. I apologize. This is uh, Jacket, the main character, as he's uh, known. This is his apartment. What a new message. Tim at the bakery. The cookies that I ordered. Alright, so we got some cookies out here. Target is a briefcase. Discretion is a vest. Discre discretion. I'm not sure what that is. Dis discretion. Discre discretion. Alright. So basically, you're you're called it. The premise of the game is you're in Miami and you get calls on your phone. It's the '80s. You have to go and and do some terrible terrible things. So, no, I I absolutely love this combo system though. Um, well, at least the the pace of the game, I should say. It's also uh, kind of gory if you're into that. All right. So you basically have to dispatch everyone in your area. Um, before moving on, they kind of have, yeah, well, or you could die, like I just did. Um, but yeah, I happen to like this system a lot. Um... 
Because you, you you know, there's there's not loading screens in between. There's a couple levels in this game where there might be dialogue that you have to skip through, but it goes through relatively quickly, so that's always good. Um, time to get into this DeLorean. What's up? And drop off the briefcase. Yeah, the, this first mission here, you, it's kind of like, oh, get the briefcase and do the thing, but it, I feel like maybe they had a thing going with that. Ow. I don't know how I missed that. Um, where you were supposed to do like specific things, but you never, you never really do that. You, the the whole briefcase thing is the first thing you do, and then you end up uh, just beating dudes up, taking them out. So uh, let me uh, skip over the chat here really quick. Uh, nobody in the chat yet. Um, you know, if you're if you're listening along here. Uh, this is uh, Jake Salvage, uh, pe uh, Facebook.com slash Jake Salvage. Also, uh, I have some videos on PeanutButterDisaster.com. I did a few other Let's Plays. Um, if you're interested in checking those out, you should go there, PeanutButterDisaster.com. But um, so we'll uh, we'll keep playing here. I love the style. I love the. Uh, it's very 80s graphically, but it's also very stylized. It's not. I I, I feel like a lot of people mistake like a kind of a pixelated feel for having to be exactly like that and you end up with like a like an old NES game but you see games like I haven't played it myself but the art style at least like Shovel Knight where it has the feel of that and and they do kind of experiment with that with colors and things but they're they're not limited they're not like full out limited by the hardware so it's nice that when you when you kind of have that as an idea instead of just being like, we have to do it exactly, you know, 8-bit all the way. Um, that's always frustrating. And, I mean, some games are... I, I was actually... Um, there was a Game Grumps episode recently that was about a uh, fan-made... Well, not a fan-made, it was a recently developed NES title, and um, I can't remember the website, but they, and I can't remember the game, to be honest. But uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, making games on old hardware is cool, but when you're making, like, a modern game like this, I mean, it definitely has a retro feel, but um, it's still functionally modern, so that's that's always important. Don't don't frustrate people by being getting caught up in the in the details there. I think it's I think it's more than enough in this game to uh, keep it going. So I do have a lot of the other masks uh, just because of again I've 100% of this game, but um, I'm gonna kind of stick with just I don't want to spoil it for you guys if you end up getting this game at any point. Um, I don't want to leave too much uh, uh, I don't want to reveal too much. So. A lot of the executions are um, varied. You don't really... This is definitely a melee-heavy game, just because... Well, it was a melee-heavy game for me. There there are weapons, but they do... Um, they are very loud. So you end up not really uh, using them that often if you're trying to do stealth. There are situations where if you... Um, if you go into a building, sometimes you have to use uh, guns... And sometimes you can actually pin a lot of guys down in one um, in one kind of room and and just kind of fire away. But you also have a limited amount of ammo for all the weapons too. The melee weapons are really the only ones that are consistently good. Um, they don't run out of ammo, obviously. Uh, you can uh, get a little farther with them. Uh, the only obviously the only disadvantage is you have to be close. Ranged weapons, close combat weapons, obviously. Um, I really like this, by the way. I noticed this probably about halfway through the playthrough. There's a little, uh, there's a little Nintendo system. You got your uh, right, right here by the crosshairs. You got the uh, NES and the controllers. There's a little cartridge here. Um, it's, I, I like the color scheme too. That's very, uh, very 80s, very neon. Um, there's little there's there's little context clues in the story too. I'm kind of skipping through this thing. Again, I don't I don't really want to ruin it for you. I highly recommend this game, even at ten dollars. Um, you you'll play it for for quite a bit. It has a good replay value actually. I uh, checked my log on Steam, and I think I put like sixteen hours into this game so far. So 
I mean, if that's any clear indication of the quality of this game, oh, dang it. Um, you can look forward a little bit, kind of map out uh, where you're going. Uh, also, you can use A to just execute somebody while you're right next to them like that, which also comes in handy. Um, doors are a huge thing, I, and this was something that surprised me, is that you can use doors to your advantage um, just by knocking people in, uh, by the doors, using the doors to uh, mess people up. Yeah, see, you know, you don't have the nice thing about guns is you can throw them too. The the doors work heavily into. Um, whew, that was a close one. Thought he was dead. Uh, the doors work heavily into this. Um, see, obviously, this guy is circling around. Bam! Pick up his weapon, beat him to death with it. Uh, and and you're trying to string combos together, obviously, to get the points. If you're uh, if you're a points guy. Um, oh yeah, this is a little. Easter egg here. I'll give you that one for free, but uh, there's a boiling pot of water here. Um, I'll, I'll die and try this over again, but um, let's see. So, oh, you can target people too, but um, so if you throw the pot of coffee, it actually, or if you if you swing with it, it actually uh, throws the water. So let's let's get this where we got like a couple of guys here. There we go. You heard that? I hope. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can do that. You can also um, uh, pour it on his face. There's a lot of gory executions. It, this game reminds me a lot of Manhunt too. I was a, I was a big fan of Manhunt. Um, obviously, Manhunt Two wasn't really that great just because of how much they had to dumb it down to even release it on the market, which is kind of hilarious just because the original game was so gory. Basically, the gore in the game. Um, was was really uh, just the same as the first one. So I don't know if people saw the first game and were like, oh, well, we can't let this happen again. Obviously, they weren't paying attention the first time. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, this has executions, but obviously they're all pixely, so they kind of get away with it there. Um, but still, like, really... You, ah, it, and it's so gory, and, that, and that's the other thing that always uh, gets me about this game is really like um, as much as they do with just the with the retro graphics. You know, this is another hallmark of a good uh, retro type game is is you really get that feeling of um, you can you can kind of feel it. I've I've cringed a few times at some of the stuff that you can do in this game. It's it's. It's pretty, I mean, I, you already saw the pot thing, so <laughs> I'll do it again here. But um, just, just if you can convey that kind of emotion in, in this kind of pixelated graphics, I mean, you're obviously doing something right. The other thing I was excited about was, you know, being, being a Johnny-come-lately, playing a lot of these games, um, you know, way ahead of time, or way after the fact, I should say. <laughs> um, kind of gives you a chance to um, kind of catch, you know, if, if, if they have a game in the works. I know, um, for instance, with this game, they have Hotline Miami 2 wrong number coming out at some point here, and, um, and so that's actually coming out pretty soon as far as I could tell. And I enjoyed this one so much, I mean, I'm looking forward to it, but if I had gotten this when it came out a few years ago, I feel like I would it would be like torture <laughs> to, to wait for that. But, now, you know, now that I've played it and enjoyed it, I, you know, really don't have to worry about it. Uh, it'll The next installment will be out before I can blink an eye, so that's cool. Um, yeah, busting these guys up. It's always fun. Oh, there's a brick on the couch there. Bricks are fun. They have throwable. They have, they have melee weapons, th uh, throwable weapons that are specifically for throwing, uh, and the, you know, obviously the guns. Like for instance, this is a dart. We can actually do fun stuff with that. I mean, obviously throw it. Doesn't really do that much damage. But, uh, fun to do anyways. Um, yeah, see, you, you get situations like this, you gotta kinda, like, map it out. Like, okay, 
So if I can get a guy near the door, I can knock one of them over with the door. And then I can kind of bum rush the other two. Or, like, uh, one of my strategies usually is to uh, throw a weapon. Oh, also, if you have a gun, you can take uh, hostages there. Which is nice. And they'll get blown away by the first shots there. Alright. So we're done with this level. Head out here. Back into the DeLorean. I like to think that's a DeLorean. Obviously, you know, name brands and such. Although I think DeLorean, I don't know, I, I've always heard, heard, and I think I did a little research on it, but that DeLorean was basically a front to smuggle drugs. I imagine they, they started as a car company, and then somebody basically used it to the wrong ends. But, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, they really only made the, D I, I think the model is the DMC-1 DeLorean. And they made it in, like, they had a gold one. Many years before the the PT Cruiser, gold with the gold flex and stuff. But uh, uh, enough about cars. Let's continue on here. Um, ah, the VHS Palace. If you're familiar with Jake Selvich, I do a show called VHXS. Actually, I have one episode out right now, but um, I plan on having more. Um, love VHSs. We got a room full of VHSs here. Uh, so you know, it's a dead format. I understand, but there are a lot of things that didn't transfer over to DVD. Um, I mean, pretty much everything is on DVD now. I imagine if you're you're really looking for something, you can find it on DVD. But that's the thing. I mean, there are a lot of VHSs that I have that if I go on to, you know, if I go on to Amazon, I can find them on V or on DVD. But really, I can go out and find a VHS out in the wild for, you know, between a dollar and a couple cents, really. So, uh, instead of going through all that trouble, going to Amazon, finding a dealer, actually there are a lot of um, DVDs that are like out of print too, so those are expensive. Um, just throw down a buck, get a VHS, you know. Not that hard. Um, We'll, we'll play one more level here. Um, not really getting anything in the in the chat here. It was kind of short notice this uh, stream, but um, let's see. We'll do we'll do one more. We'll do one more. Um, but yeah, if you like it, you know, head over to Steam. I think it's also on GOG.com. Good old games. Um, I actually got some. I got. Fallout 1, 2, and, um, oh, what was it? Fallout Tactics on that site for free one, uh, right around Christmas last year, I think. And GOG is very similar to Steam. It doesn't, I, I don't think it really has a client or, like, a, like an interface. It's just basically, you know, you, you download the game and you get the game. Oof. But, uh... Ooh, there's a machete in there. Let's get that machete. Nope, or, or get shot. Oh, there's a fire axe. Even better. Alright. Ah, oh, just trying to get around the corner in there. Pump up the jams here. Playing serious guy mode. Getting them points. Oof. That's the other thing. When you're trying to stream together combos, it's it's so hit or miss. You, you really, I mean, the lock-on system, I guess if I had to pick some downfalls of this game, the lock-on system is definitely unreliable at best. Um, it's kind of difficult to lock on while you're moving. Uh, it doesn't really target the nearest person. It's usually just the person on the, like, the scale, I want to say. Like, like the, the 360. Oh, that was close. Um, 
yeah, so whoever's in that degree direction, um, it ends up picking. So if there's a guy across the map that's in the general direction of where you're pointing, that's who they're going to lock onto instead of, see, I, I'm looking over here. Well, I'm kind of zoomed in there, but usually it's pretty good about finding who's closest, but sometimes it's kind of bad. There we go. Alright, got the axe here. Got a, got a good combo off of that. The pool cue. Ugh. Yeah, and you'll end up you'll end up doing this over and over again if you're trying to get the combos. It will happen. Throwing a fire axe! Boom! Using the fire axe! Ah, you got me. Oop. <laughs> ah, it's just, you know, it's, it's one of those games where a split second means either victory or defeat, so. I'm being extra sloppy tonight. Alright. Yeah, but, um, yeah, throwing stuff is also, I mean, your gun runs out of ammo, you can always throw it at him. Reminds me of, uh, <laughs> reminds me of Guy Ritchie. It's heavy. You can always hit him with it. Oh, that was a terrible Russian accent. Yikes. Speaking of which, I'm pretty sure this is actually a Russian game, too. So, um, I think, you know, to, I, I feel bad for being ignorant about, like, the developers and stuff. I haven't really uh, looked into it all that much. Sloppy, all right. There we go. Much better. Oof. Did not mean to do that either. Trying to draw people out is always difficult too. Sometimes, sometimes you get them right off the bat like that. Sometimes you can run up and they don't even see you. So it's not that. That's another thing I kind of like though is it's not predictable. Every every time they're not always in the same spot. You do kind of have to think on your feet, uh, and you will die a lot. It is is something that will also happen. So get used to that. Next snap. Boom. Next snap. Ah. Oof. <laughs> nope. you a question. Nope. Alright. The pool cue, this is a fun one actually. Pool cue has uh, two killing animations. Hmm, hold on. Let's get kind of a stabby. Yeah, there we go. Nope. 
That's a long animation, so here I will. I will do that. There we go. I will do the pool cue animations here. So, ugh, just like a neck stab, real, real gritty stuff. Um, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully that Hotline Miami 2 does come out. I think, uh, well, soonish. Um, I think. Um, the Kickstarter just got over with recently, at least. There we go. So, so that should be cool. Oh, shit. This guy's got a bulletproof vest. These guys always have bulletproof vests. Oh, yeah. Alright, we'll, we'll end on this gruesome note. Um, splurge. Whew. Uh, so that is uh, Hotline Miami. Uh, it's ten bucks on Steam. Go check it out. Um, if you liked this video, um, there are actually some more well put together reviews online. Um, we do have um, VHXS, uh, one of Jake Salvage things. Uh, we have some more Let's Plays. Also check out. Uh, I mean, they're on PeanutButterDisaster.com. Uh, I'm also a part of a show called Jake and Trevor View Everything. We're currently on a hiatus, but hopefully getting back to it it's pretty soon here. Um, Trev, of Jake and Trev, also does um, a show called The Short Council. Uh, he started off doing Game of Thrones reviews, Game of Thrones reviews, and now he is currently doing the season finale of the current season of Doctor Who. So, uh, if you're into Doc if you're a Whovian, uh, go check that out as well. It's all on peanutbutterdisaster.com. We also have a pa uh, Facebook page. Jake Selvage has a Facebook page. Jake and Trevor View Everything has a Facebook page. There's a lot of it. it's uh, spread out, but it's all on the site. You can you it's the site is the gateway to all of that peanut butter disaster goodness. So um yeah, thanks for uh, checking out the stream if you're watching live and you can't chat. Uh, if not, uh, if you're watching this recorded, thanks for watching it recorded. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, share it. Um, Tell, tell me what you want to see next. Uh, now that I can stream uh, Steam games, I might be more uh, inclined to try some of those. I was thinking possibly Duke Nukem, something else. But uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching the stream, and I will catch you guys later.